Thanks, guys. It's Wednesday, so that means we have our writer, staff writer, Grace Sharkey, to join us to talk about our top story. Grace, how are you? I'm doing good, Tony. Thank you so much for having me on. Thanks. So you had a story come out yesterday about C3 solutions and bringing that visibility to warehouse manager, end-to-end -end visibility of warehouse managers. Kind of talk us through uh, what they're doing over there. Yeah, so uh, C3 I've actually had on point of sale in the past, and they were just starting to work on this technology and beta it with their customers. And um, if you read the article, you know, Greg Braun, the C CRO of uh, C3, has a really interesting quote where if he read that if they could find 18 minutes um, available in every driver's um, day, or at least take 18 minutes of dwell time away from them, that we wouldn't have the driver problems that we're having today. Even more so, I think I've read somewhere that if we could get um, 30 minutes back into their day, that we'd have a surplus of drivers. So uh, what this technology does is it integrates into not just their scheduling system, but their yard management system to to help overall yard managers better prepare their day and go about their day um, uh, using automated technology to fill in the gaps. So for instance, let's say a driver is running behind, which is reasonable. That happens all the time. There's traffic, there's weather, especially this time of the year, breakdowns, things of that nature. Um, through these integrations, the system is going to know right away that that driver is going to be late. It's going to work someone else into the schedule. It's going to try to notify others that might be in the area to see if they could come from truck stops in order to fill in that time frame. And it keeps the overall docks moving and, and continuing along. Um, it also works with different chassis drivers that are working in the yard so that they can move containers around um, and trailers around as need be. Uh, and it's just an overall productive solution and it's, and it's learning from itself as it goes on. So um, it'll keep track of drivers um, compliance as well, which we all know there's very large shippers out there like Walmart, for example, that really keeps track of what drivers are on time and how often they're late and, and watches and sees, okay, maybe there's different ways that we could um, schedule these drivers and so on and so forth. So it's using that automated uh, artificial intelligence kind of technology in order to figure out the best way to manage an individual's yard. Is completely hectic right now. Um, for any viewers that may not understand what might be going on in this sector of the supply chain, can you talk to some of the limitations, some of the, the hardships that's really being uh, faced by some of these warehouses right now and why this is so important? Well, they're seeing a lot of the same exact problems that you see on the driver's side. One is finding enough workers, right? Uh, there's um, a com huge com competition between warehouses right now um, and what they're offering their their yard managers, not just um, in hourly or salary, but in benefits as well. Um, there's also different technologies that we're starting to invest in within these warehouses, right? Whether it's robotics and things of that nature. So in order to make sure that those technologies are working smoothly, you have to have a system that's willing to willing to integrate with all of these parties in order for them all to talk with each other. So, and then you add, of course, the dwell time, right? And and I think every warehouse manager should be asking themselves, you know, as a unit within all of the U.S. supply chain, or even if we're looking globally, how am I contributing to a driver's dwell time? Or do we have poor reviews on, on Google for having to wait for over two hours? Do drivers want to come here? Or do we have to, I mean, talk even with your logistics providers. Are we paying a tax because drivers know that they're going to be sitting here for some time? So I think right now it's a great time for all where house managers just in general to of course invest in this type of product but just to ask themselves you know how how are we working to eliminate dwell time and that's what c3 was really proud of is of course this is a product that's going to be helpful and, and, and do well for their business but it's contributing to eliminating that dwell time that we're seeing that's affecting so many supply chains across the globe
No, Grace, I think you make a great point there. Uh, I know warehouses and those dwell times have been in the news uh, a lot over the past 18 months. But we're going to switch gears. Another thing that's been in the headlines, the cannabis industry, right? So uh, you put out a story this morning about Blue Yonder uh, working in a partnership uh, to improve the cannabis supply chain. So what, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so Blue Yonder is working with Herbal, which is the largest cannabis distributor in, in uh, California. They actually just bought um, a cannabis distributing technology called Blackbird as well, which gave them access into Nevada. Um, and so part of that Blackbird connection was working with Blue Yonder in order to manage all this growth. I mean, we're talking about uh, this is like one of my favorite talk is, topics because we're talking about a supply chain that um, until about what, maybe 10 years ago has been all running underground, right? So we're finally being able to examine and, and process how um, state are going to be moving and distributing marijuana uh, and cannabis products. And, and this is a perfect example of how a company like Blue Yonder is, is wondering, hey, how can we attack this and how can we help companies like this um, better manage their overall growth, of course, but um, the different aspects of supply chain. I mean, um, with any type of distributor, you're looking at a number of of products ranging from, you know, edibles to flour and things of that nature. Um, you're also dealing with um, transportation of the using vehicles that are of very high value um, and aren't just your regular semi truck, right? They're even harder to find and more of an investment when you find them. So, you know, as Herbal has, has grown, has been able to acquire these companies. Blue Yonder came in and, in 2020 and helped um, use their Luminate platform to manage their overall growth. And throughout 2020 to 2021, they've actually found that they're able to reduce operating expenses by 20% and actually become more product 15% more productive uh, throughout their warehouses as well, uh, which is, is huge, right? I mean, as you're growing and expanding an operation that large to be the largest distributor in California, uh, it's uh, profit is, is one that's tough to uh, make sure is there. So the fact that they're able to um, decrease operating expenses by 20% is going to do really well for Earl's bottom line as they continue to grow. And um, I've heard rumors that they're potentially going to IPO and looking to move into other states as well. Uh, but right now, until it's federally announced um, and easier to transport across borders, they're going to just continue to add more um, retail providers and add more um different cannabis product providers into their distribution uh, centers for different retailers throughout the state. Grace, it definitely sounds like this is an industry that's primed for growth. It seems like it really kind of took off and then really started to kind of lose some momentum without some of these federal mandates coming in, but definitely sounds like it's primed for growth once those maybe do come in over the next couple of years and ease some of the processes. Um, shifting gears one more time, you are one of the busiest people here at Freightways. You just mentioned earlier, point of sale, also great quarter gals, and of course a staff writer and many other things that are amazing. Can you give us a quick recap of your most recent episode of Great Quarter Gals and what else you might be up to and maybe some of your newsletters? Yeah, for sure. So uh, Great Quarter Gals was out, came out yesterday and uh, Kaylee, uh, unfortunately, is out on vacation. Well, not unfortunately to her, unfortunately for me. <laughs> so uh, it was a special episode of Great Quarter Grace where I sold with Caitlin Murphy, who is just an excellent female leader within our space. And we talked about really what motivated her to start her own freight forwarding business, things that new companies and, and new uh, leaders should watch for as they grow. And then, of course, her time on the Missouri Supply Chain Task Force and what exactly they're doing in, as a part of that. Um, I, point of sale today, I'm actually going to be talking with Tom from uh, uh, Pickup Point. Um, I'm sorry, uh, 
playing pick up partners um, and talking about how they're working with big companies like Walmart to provide last mile uh, delivery services. So um, I think that should be really entertaining for our audience, especially um, how many partners it takes to pull off these different operations. I think, you know, people might think, okay, they're working with one provider in this area. No, it takes a number of, of last mile uh, delivery partners in order to get this stuff done. So we're going to be talking Talking about how do you even create that type of network um, and hopefully the future um, is, is 15 minute delivery something that's possible and what's what's it going to take to get that done so uh, those are some things you can look forward to from me this week <laughs> awesome grace sounds like you are quite busy so feel free to check out grace's newsletter uh point of sale and great quarter gals available all throughout uh, our Freightways ecosystem. So 